Hey Scotty, I just finished cooking some beans and I'm ready to rewatch the Call of Trinity. You wanna join me? Ooh, that's much better. I guess some spaghetti western could wait a little bit. Why not? Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim deck reviews. This series where Scott and I take the time to go through pre-con decks, read out the cards inside, give an idea how strong they are, and if they synergize with the given commander, the cuts to the deck, and how good the product is straight out of the box. At the end, we score each deck inside of an expansion against each other out of 10. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this review. I'm your host Vlad, this is Scotty. Thank you very much Scotty for this wonderful introduction. And today we're having a look at the second of the Outlaws of Thunder Junction Commander decks, Grand Larceny Steel Cards, Generate Mana. It always includes a sample pack, thankfully, for the collector boosters. It also includes a 100 card deck with 10 new cards, so two less than the Murders of Counter Mana decks, a deck box with 10 double sided tokens, a Life Wheel, the Surge Insert, a reference card, and the commander is going to be Gonti, Kani, and Acquisitor. So this is a Sultai deck, and yeah, without further ado, let's dive into it. If you're new to the channel, first off, welcome, welcome, welcome. Also, if you are interested in buying and selling any of these cards, Grand Theft Desperado, cool. If you're interested in buying and selling any of these cards, we have created our own UK exclusive card marketplace. This means that you can just go there and trade the cards, buy and sell any cards from any of our users, so you can find cards like these ones over there. Of course we do not sell cards ourselves as that would be unfair anyway here you have the deck box with gaunty on the front very beautiful as usual and it won't hold the cards if sleeved but hey oh and they have removed the illustration out of the life wheel and then you have a little bit of kind of cardboards nothing major nothing fancy and then you have the deck proper the little insert and the boosters so let's start with the collector booster sample pack and here you get three cards one is a token and two are showcase cards or variant cards that you can find in the expansion one is going to be an uncommon and the other one is going to be a rare or a mythic so the first one is humiliate and it's foil and then the next one is oh kellen the kid wow we got so so lucky with these collector samples the last one for the quick draw deck we actually managed to get tiny bones so i mean <laughs> that's insanely good so that one's gonna be good from this is grand larson all right um yeah very happy with that <laughs> this is the luckiest expansion that i've opened and collector samples and i think there was another one we oh uh, yeah it was um first of all will be one we managed to get a vraska of the uh, manga version at the very end that's about it anyway the insert is here you should be able to look at and the, the lore of gonti who he is a little bit about the deck how it's built and the rules in general so if you want to pause go ahead and do that always nice to have these as they are quite explanatory and a little bit of a uh, lore for those lore buffs that are interested in mtg lore i used to read a lot of the books i still have quite a few unfortunately ah this thing is doesn't want to close there you go done okay out of the way all right well, let's go for the deck now if you're new here do keep in mind that we review the deck with the given commander and around the given commander not just the general just the commander in general which means that the synergy of the cards inside of the deck will have to synergize and be scored against how good this is with commander and what the commander wants to do or at least support what it wants to do um so that's how we score the deck here we have a little bit of tokens at the end you'll find some outsider some outlaw cards wanted cards um this was for an in-store game that you could play with your friends and store at the lgs so there you go and we'll put the tokens aside and then we'll look at gonti also one really cool thing that i really appreciate in this expansion is the fact that the commanders are coming in full borderless art which is incredible look at this beauty just look at it it's it's incredible I, I don't know the commander but he looks so awesome and i just want to play him anyway let's have a look at the commander he's a five five that costs five with soul tie and the cost he's a legendary creature etherborn rogue so he is an outlaw spells you cast but 
don't own cost one generic less two cast so you do not own them which means you're playing with the spells of your opponents which is a very interesting deck that um even tiny bones in this one will be really good and whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player look at the top card of that player's library then exile it face down so whenever one or more it'll be kind of unfair if for however many creatures because then it will be just insanely strong and you may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and man of any type can be spent to cast a spell so this is just a tiny bone basically uh but the, the upgrade a little bit <laughs> i guess for any creature so yeah what do you want to do you just want to play spells that your opponents have and of course you want to have a range of mana uh to be able to do that because well i mean if you think about it a lot of the commander cards are going to be fairly expensive depending on the decks not all decks are low on the ground therefore the more you can play especially because you're going to have you know uh, one two three four decks to play out of you know uh, including your own i mean then this means that if you attack four opponents uh, sorry three opponents and you and you, you draw your card you want to be able to play all those cards effectively um the um, yeah so the card does remain exiled so that's also good it takes it out of the board of your opponents now this means that you're playing with the cards on you know shown but it still is insanely good i like this commander a lot so now let's have a look at the general what i call the general anyway which is felix five boots which we've seen before in our unboxing for the collector booster box so this is a 5-4 ooze rogue it costs the same as the commander it has menace and war too so very 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 strong menace of war 2 on 5 4 is very annoying and if a creature you control the combat damage of player causes a trigger ability of a permanent you control to trigger so aka like this one that ability triggers an additional time so this tiny bones anything like that 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 is really good now of course right one thing caveat this is dealing damage to a player so the other thing you want in this deck is to be able to deal combat damage to a player either by giving it flying or by going over or under making it unblockable so on and so forth there are so many ways there are lands to do that and so we'll start with the deck and see how good this is it has a really good premise i really love it and as i said i think so far this is the coolest illustration ever uh, if i could i would get that as a t t tattoo you know anyway thieving skydiver is a 2-1 merfolk rogue because two has kicker x it and x cannot be zero and has flying so there you go good deal and combat damage to the face and when it enters the battlefield if it was kicked you gain control of target artifact with mana value extra less if that artifact is an equipment attached to thieving skydiver very very good synergy with the commander and also it does things with itself so that's the kind of cards we want sage of the beyond is a 5-5 five five that costs seven it's a spirit giant yeah, it has flying spells you cast from anywhere other than your hand costs two generic classic cast which is really 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 good because you're going to be casting so much outside of your hand and you can foretell it for five making it a bit cheaper very very good i like it and it is synergistic with the fact that you're going to be spending that mana to cast those spells from outside and then we have ghostly pilfer versus a two one spirit rogue and whenever it becomes untapped you may pay two generic if you do you draw a card and then whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand you draw a card then discard a card and it can't be blocked this turn now this is i not so great i i like the fact that it can't be blocked this turn but unless you're playing a lot of the graveyard you don't really want to be discarding your cards too much um black has reanimate of course but i don't think that's the theme you want to go and i'd rather put more cards that have it so that i don't have to give out my advantage of drawing out of my own deck yes you're getting advantage from your opponent's deck so that's 100 percent going to happen but at the same time the cards that you keep are going to be the cards that well are synergistic to what you want to do not what your opponents want to do so i'll put it as a maybe if you don't have any better keep it if not just get rid of it and then we have diluvian primordials a 5-5 avatar cost seven has flying great and whenever it enters the battlefield for each opponent you may cast up to one target instant sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost if a spell cast this way will be put in the graveyard exile it instead so you get to reanimate it is fairly strong but it is one um instant sorcery card 
granted, you won't have anything that's going to be insanely good that's worth the 7, but at the same time, you're getting on a body that has flying, so if that enables Gonti, it is good. There might be better to replace, and it is synergistic, though. Stolen Goods is a sorcery, cost 4. Tagging opponent exiles cards from the top of the library until they exile a non-land card, and until the end of turn, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Very, very good. And it's synergistic and it's a sorcery and it continues the whole trend that spells that you cast but don't own cost one generic last to cast and you just playing off the top of your opponent's libraries which is what the commander and the general want you to do and again i can't just stop looking at it it's so beautiful i'm sorry i drool over this knife oh okay curse of the swine is a sorcery Plus X and two blue. We saw this in the other deck as well. Exile X target creatures for each exile creature. This way, it's control creates a two two green boar creature token. Now, because you're playing black, uh, there are better board removals uh, that actually do stuff. So you don't really need this sorcery to be cast. And uh, yeah, there are better just board removals uh, and overall just better cards that can help you do what that card is trying to achieve in these color combinations. Then we have a four or five sphinx that's called Dazzling. Sphinx, cost five, has flying, and when it deals combat damage to a player, that player exile cards from the top of the library until they exile an instant sorcery card. You may cast that card without paying its final cost, then that player puts its exile cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of the library in a random order. <laughs> Love it, it's so annoying. This deck must really be come the arch enemy really, really quickly. <laughs> I can imagine at the table. Oh my. Then we have Arcane High, saw it in the air. Collector unboxing, it's a sorcery, cost four. You may cast target instrument sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. And that spell would be put into their graveyard at great exile. And instead, and you can cipher it, which means that you may exile this spell card and code it on a creature you control whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player's controller. You may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost, which is insanely insanely strong. You put it on something that will never ever be touched, you will make it you know, hexproof and all that. There are so many, uh, there's the commander armor, there's the, um, the boots, there's there's so many cards in, in, in commander that you can give. Hexproof or, you know, unblockable or indestructible. There's the, the one ring as well from uh, the, the roller of the rings that wasn't the one that gave you, uh, so it wasn't the one in the main set, it was the one from the starter decks actually, I think as well. And there's the mithril one. So there are so many cards that just synergize with this and you tap this into it wow it's gonna be crazy so that's a good one smirky spelljacker is a 3-3 Jin wizard rogue cost five flash flying when it's his battlefield exile target spell an opponent controls so it's kind of like a counter spell again flying that's good synergizes with the commander and whenever it attacks if a card is exiled with it you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost again more synergy but you want some mana i will tell you this so far you are going to be struggling for mana and green has ramp so that's a good color combination but yeah you get another one mines dilation cost seven it's an enchantment whenever an opponent casts their first spell each turn that player exiles the top card of the library if it's a non-land card you may cast it without paying its mana cost insanely good absolutely keep uh it's just incredible you want this absolutely and it's gonna be really really good but you want to ramp to it so next up we have gonti lord of luxury so gonti is in two ways here as a two three etherborn rogue cost four has death touch when it's his battlefield you look at the top four cards of target opponent's library exile one of them face down then put the rest on the bottom of that library in a random order you may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast a spell very very nice um of course it's only when it enters the battlefield so it is going to happen only once and it's a death toucher it does annoy because it's a the two three death toucher so you can still swing a couple of times and and trigger gaunty but it's an extra trigger uh, on the ability they want to do so that's a good one and it is sort of synergistic predators power it is a sorcery cost two and until the end of turn whatever you control uh creatures you control game menace and that's good for 
our commander, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library face down. You may look at and play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast a spell. Very, very good, very synergistic, and um, just insanely good. Ooh, another one, Brain Stealer Dragon. It's a 6-6 six, six dragon horror that costs 7. Flying at the beginning of your ass step, exile the top card of each opponent's library. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled. If you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. So that's really, really, really good because this is just at the beginning of your end step. You don't need to do anything else. You just exile the card of each opponent. So at least you get three and they stay exiled. They don't dissipate at the end of your next turn. So that's good. Whenever a non land permanent opponent owns enters the battlefield under your control, you lose life equal to its mana value. I mean, this is flavor over flavor. I love it. Just value and value down. Absolutely great. Then we have Cunning Rhetoric, which is an enchantment cost three. Whenever an opponent attacks you and or planes or more planes workers you control, exile the top card of that player's library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. You miss paint mana. As as it were mana of any cost. Now, that's great. This is a protection enchantment. People are not gonna want to attack you much more so than the quick draw enchantment that uh, people have to tap to. This is gonna be even more annoying because they're gonna be losing so many cards from the top of the library. I'll tell you, I played against some really annoying decks that played off the top of the opponent's library and they really throw a wrench in your deck because you're hoping to get that one, you know, land or that one artifact of, or, you know, the type of lands or type of artifacts that will get you out of a of a pinch or a type of instance so so on and so forth and if they just get it you can't do anything you're just out of luck especially if you're playing the strongest deck on the board so anyway we have thieving amalgam it's a six seven ape snake that costs seven at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep you may manifest the top card of that player's library so it becomes a two two creature and you can turn it face up for the cost and by paying any mana um I think not any mana actually. This turn face up any time mana costs if, if, you, if it's a creature card. So uh, you still have to have the mana, but whenever a creature you control but don't own dies, it's only loses two life, you gain two life. This is kind of one of those that because it's, you have so many good but expensive cards, I would maybe cut. It is great, don't get me wrong. Manifesting the top card of your opponent's library is great, but the problem is um, you have to pay its mana cost to turn around and it might not be in the colors that you want. So just keep that in mind. And then we have Orochi Soul Reaver. It's a five, four snake ninja rogue cost six ninja two. Again, super expensive. Ninja two four, so that's great. You can, you know, do a ghost spell for or a cheaper creature flies, you ninja to it. And then whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player like this one, create a treasure token to man and manifest the token card of that player's library. That is good. I would keep it in, but it is, a late comer so yeah you have to ninja in this card absolutely freaking lonely otherwise uh, uh playing it by paying them the mana cost is going to be very very annoying um so keep it in but ninja it. that's the name of the game then we have thieving barman as a creature has a two ones cost two it's a death touch life linker that's okay and you that pay one life and up two mana of anyone called spend this mana only to cast spells you don't own very 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 good and, and that is more ramping right there heartless conscription we saw this before exile creatures for each card exiled this way you may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell exile this card very very good board wipe and the fact that it allows you to just play those creatures for whatever mana costs that's great um i am still so interested in seeing a bit more of the ramp and i'm hoping that the next part of the decks gonna have a lot of ramping because let's be honest um at the moment you're doing very much what the deck wants to do you have not real protection uh other than just dealing damage so you're very aggressive but yeah if you don't ramp well, you're gonna have a bad time. Now, now she moons Sage Science, a 3 2 rat ninja, costs 3, and has another ninja zoom. And then when it does common damage to a player, I sell the top card of each player's library until the end of turn, you may play one of those cards. And if you cast a spell this way, pay life equals this mana cost. Oh, rather than pay mana. Oh, that's good. That's not bad at all. It's very synergistic. It's not that expensive to cast. You can injust to it or you can play like that. Either way, very good. Baleful Mastery. It's an instant cost four. You may pay two rather than pay this spell's cost. If two is paid, then an opponent draws a card, any exiled target creature or planeswalker. There are better removals um, that 
iron these colors that you can do that not only exile creature planeswalker but that remove um well exile basically any non-land permanent so yeah just use those ones uh, rather than this uh it's the first instant by the way so it's good to see a target instant but yes they are better then we have oran frostfang it's a two six snow creature snake cost five attacking creatures you control have death touch great for making them um blockable because people are going to be very reticent to block them and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player you draw a card very nice more onto the theme of what it wants to do it's not not exactly um that theme but it's adjacent to the theme and given everything death touch and when it deals combat damage to a player you draw a card that is insane because um it's for any creature that deals combat damage so it's not limited to just one right so that's that's really really good then we have savvy traders a three three human citizen that costs four when it answers battlefield exile target permanent card uh, from your graveyard you may play that card for as long as it remains exile that's really really good because it's still playing from outside of your hand spells you cast from anywhere other than your hand cost one less generic to cast very very nice synergistic love it tower winder i li really like this card and i think in green is gonna become sort of a staple because it's a one one it costs two reach and death the snake and on top of that when it's battlefield you search your library and your graveyard for the command tower reveal and put in your hand and shuffle that's really really good is it synergistic no but except for the death touch it's not really synergistic it's a defensive card but what it does do is allows you to ramp right so ramp <laughs> quote unquote so in a way it's useful to your deck and it's overall in general a great great little card and you know you can just keep it on defense and then they swing in with a terror from of the skies or something huge in the air and you're just like yep here's a one one death touch or your thing dies so yeah definitely a good card to keep and we have kazu or ruthless stalker it's a three three human warrior cost four if you partner with ukimia sucking shadow um which means that whenever this enters the battlefield or the other one enters the battlefield you search your library and put this into your hand and then shuffle and then whenever creature control deals combat damage to a player which is often put a plus one plus one counter on that creature i like this because yes it's not necessarily it's adjacent it's not necessarily on the spot of what the commander does but this gives an extra oomph to those creatures that are going to be um dealing damage granted at the moment we have death touch ninjutsu and also flying so that is quite a lot of creatures right so that keep that in mind because this is whenever a creature not just any and all creatures so that's gonna be growing real quickly and it's adjacent so um i'm gonna keep it here um silent blade only it's a demon ninja that costs a uh, whooping seven but you can cast it for um well, yeah, six for ninjutsu, and it's the mirror in either of the costs. And um, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, look at that player's hand. You may cast a spell from among those cards without paying a mana cost. More of the same of what it wants to do. Very annoying, very strong. Now you're playing from their hands. And if there's a way that once it's in play, you also continuously are able to deal damage, like giving it flying or whatever, um, then yes, this thing is going to be really annoying. But I wouldn't keep too many top enders. Again, with the idea of the fact that at the moment, we don't have a lot of ramp, okay? So if you do have a lot of ramp, then no worries, keep it. If not, well, just start thinking about how you want to do that. I think you ramp or, you know, anyway, mana is really necessary in this um, deck. And and uh, to be fair, um, I like to point out that here it says steel card generate mana. So I'm thinking that mana, I just realized that I was looking at it. Um, I think there's going to be ways to ramp because otherwise, you know, that would be kind of false advertising. <laughs> anyway, uh, hostage shaker. Oh, I love this one. It's a two, three human pirate. It costs four. When it's a battlefield, exile target creature or artifact until it leaves the battlefield. It, you may cast that card for as long as it remains excellent for mana of any type can be spent to cast a spell so you either use it as a present which i wouldn't advise you or you just right away cast it which is the best way to go about it and yes it's synergistic uh, adjacent i would say um to what it wants to do and it's a removal right so um, and it removes also an artifact which you know in command you're gonna have quite a few of them so just in case you need some extra pop you got it so it's adjacent not directly um exactly what it wants to do but it's adjacent to it because 
yes, you <laughs> casting. I guess, yeah, uh, more on than adjacent. Uh, let's say Edric, Spy Master of Trust. A 2 2 Elf Rogue that costs 3. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to any of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. Mm, okay, its controller, that's great. Mm, you're gonna be the controller of that creature you may draw a card um yep more drawing that's good i it's it's synergistic but it's adjacent then we have fallen shinobi so it's another way to draw cards of course green and blue has a lot of ways even black has a lot of ways to draw cards constantly so if you want a more safe fire way to do it you can remove it you can replace it with risky study for SN arena necropotence you, you got a list from you know silver library you got a list of them anyway fallen shinobi is a 5-4 zombie ninja costs five but you can induce it for four and when it deals combat damage to a player that player excels the top two Two cards of the library until the end of turn. We play those cards without paying their mana cost until the end of turn. So this one is one of those that you have to cast those cards ASE. Then we have Cold Eyed Selkie. It's a 1 1 Murfolk Rogue that costs 3. Has Island Walk. Very, very nice. So that you can constantly, constantly trigger that. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw that many cards. Very, very good. If you put an equipment on this on top of that, it becomes really nasty. So it is synergistic because it enables exactly what it wants to do and it's very likely that in a pod of four people including yourself you will have at least one player that has one island <laughs> at least one island in any form or shape so there you go if you don't well it's unlucky but it's more than likely because blue is a very very favorite color of command then we have siphon inside it's an instant cost the mirror look at the top two cards of target opponent's library exile one of them face down and put the other at the bottom library great and you may play the exile card for as long as it remains exile great and you may spend mana of any color and you can flashback this wow that's insane yes very good and it's instant insanely insanely good very very good then we have extract brain sorcery target opponent chooses x cards because it costs x and demir from their hand look at those cards you may cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost yeah it's not bad it's a it's a nice way of of doing what the deck wants to do um and it's really, really strong because without paying its mana cost, it means that if they only have bombs or relatively, really strong ones, um, you just say, you know, I don't know, an opponent has four cards and I know that their deck has an insane amount of really good cards. I just choose four and uh, yeah, you may cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. That's insanely strong. That That is just crazy. Shadow Mage Infiltrator has fear. Great. As a 1-3, that costs 3. Whenever it deals common damage, you may draw a card. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Okay, Billful Strikes. Uh, I know why you've implemented it. There are better cards than this one. Uh, it's more an affinity for artifacts kind of deck um, theme, but I understand why you have implemented it. Replace it if you have better. Um, the, yeah, it's adjacent. It kind of does what it wants to do because it's a fly death toucher, but not really. Then we have Culling Ritual. That's great. Cost four and destroy each non lamp permanent with mana value two or less and uh, add um, black or green for each permanent destroy this way. So more of the ramp, but at the same time you get to destroy stuff. So that's really good. And yeah, mana value two or less because it's um, non land permanent. It counts also, you know, treasure tokens and all that stuff. So very good. Oh, Thief of Sanity. This was a nasty card back in the um, la latest Ravnica block. It's a 2-2 two -two Spectre that costs three hands flying whenever it deals combat damage to a player. Look at the top three cards of that player's library. Extend one of them face down, put the rest into their graveyard. Graveyard. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast it and it's flying. That's just, yeah, broken. Very, very, very broken. Very good card and uh, in this deck anyway. <laughs> and then we have villainous wealth and uh, sorcery that costs x and then soul tie target opponent exiles the top x cards of the library you may cast any number of spells with mana value x or less from among them without paying their mana cost that's not bad at all um again where's my ramp uh, so far we have ramp adjacent we have a one little uh, creature the varmint and the calling ritual i don't know that we have a lot more um, maybe there's one more that I forget. Um, then we have the Mimoplasm. It's a 0, zero ooze that costs exactly like our commander. Enters the battlefield. You may exile two creature cards from graveyards. If you do, it enters the battlefield as a copy of one of those cards with a number of additional plus one plus one counter on it equal to the power of the other card. Meh. 
not um, really synergistic. This is the only card that's not synergistic. You're playing outside of, um, well, not really. You're not really playing outside of it. You're just copying it. You're just removing some stuff that's really, really strong. And uh, yeah, if you wiped it, that's great. Um, granted, you at the moment, you're, the only wipe that I've seen is an exile. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't think this is necessarily something you need to keep unless you have nothing better. Plasma capture. It's an instant and it costs four. It's double simming. And counter target spell. At the beginning of your next pre-combat main phase, add X and uh, in combination of colors where X is spells mana value. Um, yeah. This is what I want. You get to counter and you get to... It's, it's a mana drain, basically. But, um, yeah, I, I hope this is not the only way that they give it. I understand that it's best to do two or three things in once, but it's best also to have the ability to cast a spell. So mana rocks and stuff like that, you just got to set yourself up to play from your opponent's uh, decks in general. And we have Ukima Stalking Shadow is a 2-2 Whale Wolf that costs 3. Partner with Cesar or Kazur, sorry. And um, when it, it, it can't be blocked. I love that. And when it leaves the battlefield, it deals X damage uh, to target player and you gain X life where X is power. It's adjacent and it's good. Keep it, especially if you have both of them. Very good. Blade Griff prototype is a 3-2 Griffin. Cost five, has flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, destroy target non land permanent of that player's choice. That one of your opponent controls. Okay, that's not bad. Um, I mean, that's really annoying. It has flying. It's a bit expensive, but it is a way to constantly destroy stuff, especially if you give it protection. As I said, if you build it right, you should have a couple of equipments that at least protect your creatures and make them unblockable. And then you can swap it onto this one. And then you just go to town and just constantly destroy your opponent's board and trigger all the other things that need to happen. Um, so it is adjacent to that. Oh, Chaos One. Okay. Three generic are not effect tap. And tap four, target opponent exiles cards from the top of the library until they exile an instant sorcery. You may cast the card without paying its mana cost, then put the exile cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of that library in random order. So more of the way. Um, but again, I need my, my ramp, but very good. That's very synergistic. So Dream Thief's Bandana. Cost two, it's an equipment. Whenever a quick creature deals common damage to a player, look at the top card of the library and then exile it face down for as long as it remains exiled. Okay, so you're giving that ability to any creature. Again, very, very good, but I would love a bit more protection for my uh, creatures, um, if if possible, with them. Then we have, ooh, Oblivion Sower, 5-8 Eldrazi, the cost is generic. When you cast this spell, target opponent exiles the top four cards of the library, and then you may put any number of land cards that player owns from exile onto battlefield under your control. This is very um, situational, right? You're really, really, really hoping that the top four cards are not gonna be duds. Realistically, maybe you're gonna be able to get one or maximum two lands. If you're very unlucky, uh, I mean, yeah, if you're very unlucky. If you're very lucky, it's the opposite, but um, I, there are better ways to ramp. I, I just, like, I understand why you're doing it. And again, it's Exile and you play those cards from Exile and I understand that. But the fact that you're just not, um, sorry, I just realized that there's like a line of scratch here. For every card great um for for a six coster five eight you know it's on the top end and once it's in play it's kind of dead there right it's just a great blocker but it's just dead there it doesn't do anything else and um yeah if you have no better way of ramping keep it it's not bad but uh this would go better in the eldrazi deck maybe we'll see it in um, modern horizon 3 eh? Eh? anyway uh, non-synergistic unfortunately it is rampy but it's not that great in this very situation then we get overflowing basin and the dragon catacomb very good to see it back temple of deceit in a new illustration temple of malady or malady dark water catacombs fetty pools you have in my coast what well, was nice to see the ping lands um then we got the very distant bog the zodic general ground river yes very nice woodland cemetery sunken hollow very great um temple of mystery and uh, of course the sunken hollow is good if you're playing basics uh dark Slick shore centerland harbor very nice and then flooded grove toilet mire so these lands are back i don't actually mind these ones i don't waste oh it, it has a lot of good lands i will say this one is actually not too bad so yeah as i was saying it has some pretty good lands in here you have the filter lands you have the ping lands oh i don't remember the technical name um you have some pretty decent lands 
Of course, there are no shock lands. I'm still waiting for that time where they do that or any of the triumphs because, let's be honest, they're there. You should be able to just print them in here. And they're not, I mean, they've been printed to oblivion, so uh, it's not gonna matter too much. They're still very strong cards no matter what. Anyway, Slither Blade can't be blocked. More synergistic, it's very cheap. Great, more of that. Uh, Warlord Rogue is a 2 2 human rogue artificer. It costs 4, and when it enters battlefield, create 2. 1 1 Coralist Sopter artifact creature token with flying, and top 2 on top artifacts you control. Target creature can't be blocked. It's from very, very strong. Do not underestimate this because you can give it to anything. So long as those, um, you have at least 2 uh, untapped artifacts, which, you know, you could definitely do that without problems. Once you start splashing in some artifacts in the stack, you'll be fine. And you can even tap um, an equipment, for example, and that we're talking about before then we have triton shore stalker can be blocked very very nice and don't discount them these cards are very very good to get that trigger from gaunty and from the other cards feed the swarm destroy target creature or enchantment opponent control you lose life man again there are better removals if you want to keep it also because it's a sorcery um if you don't have better than you uh silhana ledge walker it's a one one cost two has hex proof can't be blocked except by creatures with flying another way to go under oh finally some ramp I have Rampant Growth, which is great, and Sorcery. And we have Kodama's Reach, so your library for up to two basic land cards. Remember, though you're playing with these ones, you have to play with basic lands more so than non-basic, right? So keep that in mind. So that's two. Then we have Void Attendant. It's an Eldrazi Processor. It's a two, three, cost three, has the Void. So it has no color and it costs two. Put a target opponent, a card opponent owns from exile into that player's graveyard and then you create um, a scion so this is a very long-winded way of giving you mana that's as simple as that now granted um, you're still able to get your opponent's manas so that's one thing to keep in mind because throughout this you can still play cards that are their your opponent's lands right so if necessary because you're going through a lot of lands that's great the problem is you can still only play one land per turn and you're gonna have a lot of lands probably laying around maybe like four or five so this one i see why they did it and it allows you to kind of filter those lines through but realistically it's a clunky way of doing it so i, I love it it's eldrazi i love eldrazi i think eldrazi and and uh, phyrexian are my favorite two um tribals or um kindred whatever they call it nowadays then we have three visits and it's a sorcery it costs two so she'll have for a forest card put it onto the battlefield and shuffle another way to go for it and uh, this one is not necessarily a basic so that's really good now we have putrefied there you go the short target artifact creature it can't be regenerated it's an instant that's much better than the ones we were talking about trigon predator is a two three flyer beast that costs only three when this combat damage to a player you may destroy target artifact and shaman that player controls and that's very very nice and uh yeah it's, it's adjacent not necessarily on top um just like this one and all the other ones but um it does help trigger because of the flying it's just that it's harder to block this one for example than that one so that's why i put it there hey anyway, we have doc arlock <laughs> grizzled genius this is a two three bird druid it costs simic and it's from this expansion spells you cast from your graveyard or from excel cost two generic classicas great and plotting cards from your hand cost two generic classicas so this is just great overall keep it absolutely um then we have an arcane signet necessary dark stealing gun so yep you need a lot of mana rocks and uh, especially if you can make them indestructible that'd be great um Felwar stone that's another one prismatic lens that's another one um i mean always you can trade uh depending on what mana rocks you have right trade them up or down or whatever um so i, I would say you will need them in this deck for sure soul ring command tower rarely query tower is quite good because you have a lot of draw when dealing combat damage too uh, access tunnel that's also great because it gives unblockable and then i was hoping you have the rogues passage and there was another one that gives unblockable so you can easily find them they're always being reprinted in the latest deck it's just strange that they didn't print them in this one i guess we ran out of cards that they needed to print and uh, here you have five islands and six swamps and four forests so tally up the deck i love this deck i really do and it would be a close 7.5 if it wasn't for one simple reason which is the ramp you are 
sorely lacking on ramping and you definitely need to have that to be able to cast more than one spell you got to remember you're going to be you know with a commander and everything you're going to have like five six seven cards extra outside of your hand every turn and um if it's instance then you can cast them on, on opponent's turn but otherwise you can only cast them on your turn and even then unless you have something like for example what was the card that untaps all lands at the end of turn I'll put it up somewhere in the video. For example, that would have been really good for you uh, to be able to cast those um, flash creatures or instants or whatever uh, that half flash. Anyway, whatever. Those cards in your opponent's turns, it would have been great. And other than that, yeah, green has a lot of ramping. You can do green and black. There's a lot of way to just do it. And the way that they've done is kind of weird because they've gone with these two weird things and the mimoplasm as well is kind of strange because they're not really milling your opponents and you don't have any board wipes so that's one th other thing you have only one it's an exile it does not wipe and um when you're playing a deck like this you are so so freaking aggressive and um you're playing off of your opponent's cards so every game is going to be very very different which is good i think it's going to keep the game interesting but at the same time you need to have more tools to deal with many many different situations so you need to have some more protections like heroic intervention you need to start having a little bit more on the way of mini target removal that's a bit better or just some bounce spell even um um but yeah anyway um some better removals are necessary in here uh, like a damnation at least or something like that um for the board wipe some protection and definitely more ways to ramp i'm sorry but when you put it on the box and you say oh generate mana i was thinking you'd be like oh yeah you have like land war elves and you have you know the, the simplest of things not um a lot i, I think for for them they see this as a lot you know these so if they added the prismatic lens the felwar stone and darcy ingot which is great but it's not necessarily the best and there are better ones the, that are mana rocks they could give you more so um yeah overall um even the basalt monolith for example anyway overall i think you need a bit better of that and because of that i think i give this a 7.0 just because of that so you have enough synergy with your creatures to do what your commander wants to do. You have some great enchantments. You have some way of defending yourself, not really protecting yourself. You have definitely, you will be able to do what the commander wants to do. And it's less scatterbrained than the quick draw deck. And uh, that's why I give it a 7.0. It could have been a 7.5 had it had a bit more on the way of mana, for sure. I don't expect these decks to be perfect out of the box, but if you're telling me that you're going to have a lot of mana, I'm expecting that at least a third of the cards only do mana. Only do mana or in the best way do um mana and then do something else right so if you're not giving me that if, if you're not giving me cards that untap lands or whatever then i'm not gonna count it as a mana generating deck and you do have the colors for it. you're not playing red uh, you're playing green so that's why either way i think this would be a fun deck to play and it would be even a fun deck to make a commander out of. I really love it. And um, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this deck. Because uh, maybe you like them, maybe you didn't. And you played them and you, I don't know, maybe I was wrong. Either way, we read and reply to every one of them. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure to give a thumbs up and sub to the channel. As it does help small channels like ours immensely. And uh, we will see you in the next ones. Where we'll be unboxing the last two decks, Most Wanted and Desert Bloom. And until the next time, from Sky and I, we thank you very much. We wish you a lovely day, a blessed day. Be good, be kind, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!